Wormholes, particle physics, extra dimensions. Are the wonders of so-called reality really what they appear to be? Or do we exist in an elaborate hologram? Is our universe the result of random activity or the result of intelligent design? If a creator was involved, can we discover him through our perception of divine order? This is Into the Multiverse with Josh Peck. What is the importance of the quantum world of tears? What can they tell us about ourselves and maybe even our relationship with God? Maybe even into the mind of God? Well, we have a very special guest who uh, has written a brand new book, maybe something a little, uh, a little different than usual, but something that I, I think everybody out there will be able to get something out of. Uh, now, before we get to the guests, I want to introduce my lovely, beautiful wife in studio with me today, Christina Peck. How are you doing? I'm doing great, honey. How are you? I am fantastic. And our special guest for the very first time on Into the Multiverse, Stephen Quayle. Steve, how are you doing? Well, really great. As someone who lives on the edge of the universe, it's nice to be in your <laughs> multiverse world. I well, mean, it's a, it's a delight. Thank it, you for having yeah, me. Yeah, it's great to have you here. And, and, you know, I'm only just now remembering that I was supposed to introduce you as an entity from, a, yeah, <laughs> from another should. universe. Don't you the entity, use personage. The personage. entities are the ones that we cannot even define their origin. Right. That supposedly represent us in Washington. Right. That only right. represent themselves. Those are the entities. Unknown. Oh, yep. We know the origin. Exactly. And you're not. You're not that. No, so. I'm not. <laughs> well, it is an absolute pleasure to have you in studio. And um, I, I've only just received this book yesterday. And thank you for for bringing us copies, by the way. Uh, so I've only had time to skim through it. And I, I heard you and Derek talk about it on the uh, Skywatch Daily and. I'm blown away already. Just looking through the, the uh, table of contents in this, uh, what was it that first got you interested in this? Because tears is something I think we probably all take for granted, but I didn't realize how much until I heard you talking about it. Well, first of all, the shortest sentence in the New Testament is Jesus wept. Mm -hmm. And the thing that's always been in the back of my mind, I'm talking for years and years and years, that's the shortest sentence. But I knew this. I knew the shortest sentence, just like the uh, shortest, let's say, statements Jesus made are probably so uh, complex and complexly simple. Okay. Yes. So I was in the shower one day, and I know this is going to be interesting to people because uh, I tell people that that's where God speaks to me. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of reasons. There's even scientific uh, 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 tests done and studies about why people tend to relax in the water. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, even women who give water birth, you know what I'm saying? Right. Less trauma, and it's relaxing. But one of the things that instantly that came into my heart was a statement, tears, a notion of emotion. And the, I, I never heard that before, so it's not something I go around going, tears, an ocean of emotion. You know, it came into, you know, it just came before me. And then the understanding of each person's tears. Now, I want to share something. Normally, I research stuff, I write it, you know, you plot it out, you outline it, footnote it and everything else. That's not what the, the way this book happened. Mm -hmm. This book happened as an instantaneous burst transmission into my understanding. And it's kind of interesting because, you know, you're, you're taught, for instance, in mathematics, by the way, that's not my strong suit, but you're taught Same all here. the fo formulas, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, and people that do organic and qualitative chemistry and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I look at all their little charts and graphs and I go, that drives me crazy, you know. <laughs> but the point is, is that God began to download, and, and I'm saying this, I could not have this understanding. I passed this understanding by, by a lot of people who said, I've never heard it. So I think it's mm -hmm. unique, and I think it's important that people understand this. Tears are basically a bubble memory mm -hmm. of the sum total of who you are, of who you are, of who, I, who everybody is. Mm -hmm. And our tears are, if you will, a neurochemical uh, substance that basically is unique to each and every one of us as a fingerprint is, or as an iris scan. Mm -hmm. So the understanding that I was given in the shower that day is tears are not only an ocean of emotion, but they are the way that we relate to the universe around us. And, you know, it's like guys aren't supposed to cry, mm -hmm. but yet Jesus wept, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. Uh, Jeremiah wept. Mm -hmm. Oh, that my head were a, 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 a river of tears, you mm -hmm. know, that I might weep for the uh, daughter of Jerusalem, you know? And, and all through David wept. David, King David said he covered his uh, pillow in tears, you mm -hmm. know? So the thing is, is there's a therapy. Somebody once said this, Josh. He said that what soap is to the body, tears are to the soul. Mm. And they've proven that 
tears even have, if you will, a, a, a therapeutic effect, especially when someone goes through grief and mourning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so here's the understanding that I think is really critical for people to understand that your uniqueness as a human being, sometimes we can't express ourselves, nor do we choose to express ourselves, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, I can make people cry, but that's not always a good thing. But there are people <laughs> that cry out of joy, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. out of uh, just happiness, you know, they laugh so hard, you know, I'm, they laugh themselves into tears. The science behind tears and the photomicrographs of mm -hmm. tears is probably one of the most amazing things. Just as each snowflake is unusual, you know, they have categories of snowflakes. The tears in the photomicrographs are like uh, matrix and lattices, okay? Mm -hmm. And you can't just look at a, a two-dimensional slide image or a photograph, even when you're looking at them in 3D microscope. It's infinity presented before you, but infinity has, it, 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 you're watching Infinity, excuse me, you're watching an infinite uh, expression of the finite. Now, I don't mean mm. to double talk, okay? Right. What you're seeing is the sum total of a person's experience being expressed, okay? Obviously, we cry, mm -hmm. but after I was getting that in the shower, then the Lord said, tears of the righteous, tears of the damned. And mm -hmm. I know the word, because I've studied it so long, that the, the Bible teaches that when Christians are, are tearing up, mm -hmm. whether it's tears of repentance, tears of joy, tears of thanksgiving, you know, even the tears of our brokenheartedness, the tears of a loss of a loved one, all those tears are holy to the, to the Lord. It, yeah. Even in ancient times, they had tear bottles and they would store those tears. They knew that the tears, even the antiquity, were the essence of the person, okay? Wow. Now that's pretty neat. Yeah. And then obviously the understanding that I've been given on this, I think is pretty profound. When Jesus bore all of our sicknesses and all of our sorrows, okay, mm -hmm. he bore the sum total of each and every human being's total life experience. Wow, imagine that. Yeah, imagine that. I mean, it's pretty mind-blowing. That's one of those deals that goes, <laughs> you know, I was just explaining to Joe Horn, I was going, Joe, this means, it's really hard to embrace. And I think yeah. it has to almost come through revelation. Yeah. Because the scripture says Jesus died at one time for all men at mm -hmm. all time, you know. And the thing that was even more uh, wonderful than that is that God takes those tears that have been shed by the redeemed, mm -hmm. and at some point it's offered up on the mercy seat, which is obviously covered with blood, okay, mm -hmm. the blood of the lamb, and then the tears. So what it's showing you is the blood, you know, is that which covers all the tears. And we're told as believing Christians that God will wipe away our tears, and there are no tears in eternity, mm -hmm. you know, and right. sorrow and mourning will flee away. Then you take it and contrast it to the situation of the tears of the damned, mm -hmm. because Jesus talked about hell. I know a lot right. of people don't want to, uh, you know, talk about. It. By the way, with new understanding of plasma physics, you can understand how hell can be a lake of fire because a magnetic field can control a plasma. Mm -hmm. But oh, yeah. hell is yep. expanding, mm -hmm. and what do we have? We have crustal shift in the Earth. You know. Yep. We actually just talked about magnetars in a previous episode. Okay. Talk yeah. about. I didn't know that. Uh, yeah, so. the strongest magnetic field being a literal representation of hell. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. Right. So the thing is, is that now understand this. When we accept Jesus, okay, mm -hmm. our sins, we repent, you mm -hmm. know, God's spirit transform us, transforms us because the Bible says to as many as received him, Jesus gave he the power to become the sons of God. Okay. Yeah. So the thing is, is we're talking about a supernatural power, just like uh, when the I'm sorry, but the people that reject God and his offer of salvation and forgiveness, mm -hmm. those tears are with them through an eternity of hell. So they bring all that mm -hmm. with they them. They bring all that with them. Wow. Thank you. That's what I'm trying wow. to say. I'm try uh, you're good at simplifying stuff. And I don't, I don't, th but here's the, th if you understand that, it puts the wow back in you. Yeah. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I mean, let's face it. God says more numerous than the sand of the sea. So are his thoughts towards us in the 139th Psalm. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, some of us can look in the mirror and go, you know, I really have a hard time, God, coming up with five things I like, you know? <laughs> yeah. and, and so, but the obvious thing is we see what we see, but we don't see what God sees. Mm -hmm. So my prayer is, God, show me how you see stuff mm -hmm. from your perspective. And this was probably one of the greatest revelations, I'll say this, in 44 years, 45 years of walking, stumbling, and mm -hmm. picking up by the grace of God. Uh, it's one of the greatest 
revelations I've ever had, but it also puts the wow back. And I, I define wow, the acronym, the wonder of his word. You know, oh, wow. I leave yeah. the H out, but the wonder of word. And the thing that's important is I think this is going to be a freeing book. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are really going through, they don't understand grief, you mm -hmm. know, and even Jesus wept over, obviously he wept over uh, Lazarus, you know, mm -hmm. and death. What I see death in those tears, you know, and yet Jesus endured the cross and he never lost track of why he came to earth, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Most people don't get the power of sin the presence of sin, and the Bible says, for this purpose was the Son of God manifested, that he might destroy the works of the evil one, right. you know? And the idea of this cosmic conflict, but yet, one of the things that just, you know, this, I ponder this. Now, obviously, mm -hmm. you know, this book is like reading me, okay? Yeah. I mean, when I look at that thing, I go, hmm, you know? <laughs> I can understand what God's doing. He's preparing us all to be able to deal with events that are going to happen and, and, and are happening now that are going to break our hearts. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm not prophesying. Everybody knows everything that's out there, you know, that, mm -hmm. that those of us who've been warning for all these years have, have listened to. But it's now time to see that he who's begun a good work in us will finish it. Mm -hmm. And then just the other day after, you know, I, I, we just got these in about last Friday, it dawned on me that, and this is what I heard in my spirit, you know, because mm -hmm. I was going, what, what kind of ink does God write in a book of life, you know? Right, yeah. Okay, and here's what, here's, you know, I mean, that's in my brain, you know, I, I think differently than most people, <laughs> you know, don't roll your head on doom buggies without uh, roll bars and helmets, you know? <laughs> but by the grace of God, I can still at least communicate. But the idea of the tears, and here's what the Lord spoke to my heart. And I, I, I want everybody to pray. I say, don't take anything I say, mm -hmm. take it to the Lord in prayer, you yeah. know? Yeah. Because I've said that since I started talk radio, started on talk radio. I say the same thing, yeah. Yep. Take it to the Lord in prayer because he's trying to stretch us, okay? But this is what he said. Steve, tears are the ink that I write the book of life with. Wow. I go... Boy, would I, I wouldn't have guessed that one. <laughs> no, and you can't guess this stuff. You know, it's can't sell by searching, find out the ways of the most high God. Right. So that's kind of the, the awesomeness of tears, you know. Mm -hmm. And the tears are is unique. And, and this is what's interesting because the, even the ancients knew that. I'm talking 2,000, 3,000 years ago, you know. Mm -hmm. And now you can take tears of an onion, and you can look at the tears of an onion, and they're totally different yeah. than human emotional tears. Mm -hmm. Then you can define the emotion in the tears. And then wow. you can define, you can define, you can define. And this is kind of interesting, because you guys talk about a lot of cool stuff, okay? Mm -hmm. And one of the neatest things I know is time. You've yes. dealt with time. Oh, yeah. And the mystery of time will be no more, according to the revelation yep. In, yep. of the angel. So one of the things, and since we're doing multiverse, one of the things that, you know when people, they say they knew they're going to die and they saw their whole life pass before them. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I'm working on now, and I'm really not there yet to issue, quote, a paper, mm -hmm. you know. Well, if I issue a paper, I write out longhand, and then, you know, it looks like you got to have a Rosetta Stone to <laughs> decipher it. Fortunately, there are people that can type my stuff. But the thing is, is that, Time, I see time as happening all at once, okay? Yeah. And you guys are probably talking. I, I look at it, and this is the understanding I was given, because this is not, you know, me. I mean, I, I worry about stuff and end of the world and World War III and Russia's throwaway, U.S. I mean, I, I deal with a lot of stuff in the day, mm -hmm. okay? This bioweapon, I see the tracer over there, you know, all this stuff. But time is interesting. And imagine, if you will, almost like a, a, a infinitely uh, layered or leveled game of chess, okay? And each space between each box, you know, mm -hmm. you, you, can, you could probably draw that, and that's your free will. Mm -hmm. The free will you exercise at any given point on the board, not point in time, mm -hmm. point on the board determines the direction that that lattice fills in with, okay? Wow, yeah. And this is very cool because, you know, I'm sitting here going, oh boy, I get it now. You know, well, of course I get it because God's merciful because I'm going... This stuff with time really frosts my cake, Lord. And mm -hmm. to that, I'm, somebody says, well, you can't pray that way. I said, I'm sorry, that's how I pray. Yeah. I try and be honest, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah. I've read so much stuff on time. You know, mm -hmm. I, obviously, 
But this is why I'm, I'm, I'm encouraging everybody, Josh. I'm encouraging people to go to the Lord and say, Lord, show me your way. This book, Tears an Ocean of Emotion, it's a lot of science, okay? But it's not, yeah. you don't have to have a PhD or anything. Right. right. And, and the, like the stages of grief and all that kind of stuff. But the most important thing is this, is that we can look forward to the day when all our tears are washed away, okay? And I, I think I looked it up. Somebody, you know, somebody wants to check this out. Those of you guys on computers, I'm obviously addressing the audience, the yeah. peanut gallery. <laughs> but just put in how many songs have the word tears in them. It's amazing. You know, you can think of all the, as tears go by, you know, mm -hmm. tears of whatever by. I mean, all these different songs. So tears have, have been, if you will, the subject of so many lyricists and so many musicians over the years, you know. Mm -hmm. And the, the idea of a bubble memory, mm -hmm. the idea of our DNA being, uh, obviously the quintessential storage medium yeah you know and and I remember talking about that stuff Josh 20 years ago Wow you know and and so the idea of this is this is that I believe God is giving revelation I believe like shows like yours okay mm -hmm. Tom's all the different shows that are being out there where people are taking the Word of God and 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 studying it to show themselves approved unto God there's so much stuff here it's it's just amazing so uh, time okay yeah I'll get to that. I'm sorry. I got a little <laughs> rabbit trail. By the way, my rabbit trails go at the speed of life to some place, <laughs> speed of life, you know, in some other universe. Well, but, our audience has me as a host, so okay. they're used to that kind good, of trajectory. Good, good, good. We go on many rabbit you, trails. You get the emails. Why don't you ever stay on topic? Yeah. I'm trying oh, yeah. to follow you. Oh, yeah. And I'm sorry, but I get those, you know? <laughs> yep. I'll never listen to you again. Promise? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, then why are you commenting yeah. to let me know yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. One uh, second, we do got to go to break real fast. Uh, s stay tuned. We're going to continue more on this. Tears and time uh, right after this. You've been fighting in a war against an enemy you've been told doesn't even exist. Skywatch TV wants to change that to prepare you for the battles ahead. Beginning March 7th, exclusively from Skywatch TV, the Cosmic War Collection finally arrives. Featuring three groundbreaking books, a five-hour DVD, and a seven-hour audio series showing you how real the supernatural War of Kingdoms actually is. Reversing Hermon by acclaimed Bible and ancient language scholar Dr. Michael S. Heiser. And The Great Inception by Skywatch TV's Derek P. Gilbert. You'll learn how Christ's full mission has been misunderstood for 2,000 years. Not only did he come to shed his blood to redeem mankind, Jesus was on a mission to reverse the sin of the angelic watchers who descended on Mount Hermon. You'll also discover how Bible stories you've known since childhood were literal battles in the spirit realm between God and the gods who rebelled. When you order the Cosmic War Collection from Skywatch TV, you'll receive Reversing Hermon by Dr. Michael S. Heiser, The Great Inception by Derek P. Gilbert, a new, exclusive, never-before-offered deluxe hardcover collector's edition of the Book of Enoch, The Real Clash of the Titans DVD, a special, never-before-released video compilation with five hours of teaching on the long war between God and the gods, and The Unseen Adversary, a brand new audio series on MP3 disc with seven hours of Derek P. Gilbert interviewing Dr. Michael Heiser on The Watchers, UFOs, and The Great Cosmic Rebellion of Satanic Forces. A value of more than $100, yours for just $29.95. The Cosmic War Collection, available beginning March 7th only from Skywatch TV. Know your enemy, order the Cosmic War Collection beginning March 7th by calling 844-750-4985 or log on to skywatchtvstore.com. Welcome back to Into the Multiverse. I am your host, Josh Beck, of course, and we forgot to tell people how to find us online before we started the show because we were so <laughs> excited okay. to get started. We just how can, right into this it. might be somebody's first time viewing the show. Where, where can they find us online? How do they uh, immerse themselves in the multiverse? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, it's very simple. You can find us here on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash Into the Multiverse, or if you have Roku, check us out on Roku under the Skywatch TV channel. Yes, and make sure you do subscribe because we do extended interviews sometimes and those are only available on our YouTube channel. So you'll want to make sure that you do that. I have a feeling this will be one of them. Uh, so you'll want to make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel and also find us on Roku, Skywatch TV, all the stuff that you said. Um, I, I want to jump back into this. I, I do want to give you an opportunity to ask something, though. Oh, sure. I found it interesting in one of your chapters. Uh, you asked the question, do animals cry? 
do they cry? And how is it different from human tears? Well, that's really a good point. And the only animal that I can see the scientific proof of it done with the same parameters that they test human tears are elephants. Mm -hmm. Wow. Elephants have one of the most, I would say, this beautiful, God-given senses of family. For instance, elephants, when an elephant dies, mm -hmm. the herd will do its best to basically console the uh, mate of the elephant. When they come back a year later, when the, when the, where that elephant, uh, the member of the herd, you know, or family, mm -hmm has died, they remember it. They actually do an honor thing. They have a service. Now, I, I, they're not blowing trumpets and bringing an elephant preacher, okay? <laughs> but the deal is, is that when a mother elephant loses one of her calves, you know, mm -hmm. the weeping, and what they've noticed in, 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 that's very interesting is the elephants are really smart. Mm -hmm. They're very smart. Probably one of the smartest animals in God's creation, okay? Yeah. And they're not big and dumb. They're incredibly smart. Two events that kind of really took my heart on this one, and I really do like elephants. I've never been an animal lover, mm -hmm. i got to tell you this. I'm just not the animal lover, okay? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but the thing is, is that God has teach me something through even His creation, okay? Mm -hmm. Is that the elephants, they have such an understanding of time and space. I'll give you a good example. One of the elephants, it's an Asian elephant, was bound for 50 years. This one was just in the uh, headlines around the world maybe a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, is that he had, uh, it was an old story, but it was brought forth. And he had been bound for 50 years, you know, and abused. When the people came in to rescue the elephant, you know, they took his chains off and the elephant sat down and cried, mm. cried and wept and then trumpeted, you know, mm. wow. when another case that, you know, listen, I'm trying to hold it together because, you know, I'm kind of like this guy in outer space right now. But the point <laughs> is, is that we're the elephants are so. How do I say this? So sympathetic to each other mm -hmm. and so caring for each other. For instance, this, another bull elephant gets shot in the head and he mm -hmm. doesn't die. And he, the, guy, the elephant, you know, I mean, I want to go meet the elephant. Yeah. The elephant <laughs> walks like something like a, a, a tremendous distance, like 50, 75, 100 miles, I think it was 100 miles, to a veterinary clinic in, you know, the African plain. He lays down the veteran sea that the elephant obviously been shot, needs help, it's infected and stuff. Mm -hmm. And the vets treat the elephant, okay, take care of him, put him back. The elephant, when they turn him loose, gets up, looks back, trumpets, okay, and starts to cry. He wasn't crying, okay? Oh. So, you know, wow. now everybody wants to run out to the local pet store and buy an elephant, you know? <laughs> but the deal is, is that what I believe is happening is creation travails for the manifestation of the sons of God, okay? Mm -hmm. And all creation. And Jesus said if the, if the people didn't cry Hosanna, the stones would cry yeah. out, you know? Mm -hmm. right. And you can even get into the, the whole world, to quote the multiverse, yeah. the quantum nature of sound, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is actually yeah. something that me and Tom have talked a lot about because we have this <laughs> ongoing uh, <laughs> ongoing argument, if we, if we can call it that, if a tree falls in the woods and you know doesn't make a sound if there's no one around to hear it. Where do you stand on that? Absolutely it does. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> because <laughs> let, me tell you, let me tell you something. We win. First of all, yeah, no, no, no. But I mean, uh, it doesn't, uh, basically God challenged Job on that. Where were you when I laid the yeah, foundations that's of the world? Right. <laughs> I got news for you. I don't think God put it on mute. That's you know? right, exactly. You know, so, so the thing is, is that <laughs> yeah. we're, we're in a time period now where the revelations, the secret things of God, mm -hmm. I think God wants to share it. By the way, that's why the Illuminists and those mm -hmm. others who have different fragments of the book of Enoch, mm -hmm. tradition teaches there are 360 books of Enoch, one for yeah, each day yeah. of his life. Yeah. And whether it's in the lost you know, library of Alexandra or uh, you know, Alexandria, some people pronounce it without the IA, you know, let's face it, the lost libraries, whether it's the Emerald Tab, the Emerald Tablets of Tote, mm -hmm. you know, all, or the, now the news is that the Antarctic, the, the, if you will, the hall of records has been found. Yeah. And so here's, here's the, the reason why the books of Enoch are hidden. And we only have the fragments that were found in the Dead Sea Scrolls. And now we found a new cave with some new scrolls, you know? Yeah, just recently. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I think, what, in the last month at least, yeah. or they admitted to it in the last month. Mm -hmm. The thing that's fascinating is the book of Enoch, God explained everything to Enoch, who came back, you know, mm -hmm. he was taken and then and shown all this stuff, sent back to earth and then taken, you know. Two people in history that were taken like that. One's Elisha, mm -hmm. uh, excuse me, Elijah. With a J. With yeah. a J, thank you. <laughs> Elijah. 
with a J, okay? And the other one's Enoch, yeah. where he walked yeah. with God and was not. Mm -hmm. And boy, you get into the quantum aspects of the teleportation. Oh, yeah. yeah. And you know, I mean, it's, it's an amazing thing. So what this book is, and this is why I thank you for letting me come and share on it. Anytime. I, I think this is going to be a really, really big blessing to the people who are struggling with unforgiveness, mm -hmm. especially for people who have been abused in any way, shape, or form. Yeah. You know, people have been disappointed, people who are disappointed in God but don't understand that their their referencing to the disappointment is the enemy's attack, you know? Yes. Because and that's what see, that's what Satan does. He's trying to break our uh, acknowledgement of God. Every problem in the universe right now is there's no fear of God in the mm -hmm. world. Uh, in the land, yeah, but in the world, the devil didn't fear God. Obviously, yep. you know, he envied him. So the thing is, is that the the book is designed to be a ministry vehicle, you know, and the scriptures. God, I, I would just say this: that the understanding that is in the scripture, it written in the pages, is something that I think will be mind blowing to most people. Because just put it in, in an ocean of emotion. Notice this that just as the, the thoughts that God thinks towards us, this should blow everybody's mind. He says, more numerous than the sand of the sea, mm -hmm. so are my thoughts. And we, I just gave that thing. So the sand of the sea and the tears, an ocean of emotion, mm -hmm. you know? Wow. And now yeah. put it into perspective. What sets the boundary for the sea? The sand, right? That's right. Yeah, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. So what sets the boundary of our lives, the tears, okay? The sand. It's God's thoughts towards us. Mm. He's able to save to the uttermost. What I'm saying to you, I've never said it before in my life, so I'm going, thank you, Lord. Because number one, it is the, to, all things are to the glory of God the Father, okay? Mm -hmm. And by being to the glory of God the Father, we really recognize when you have a small God, and I mean this, you know, uh, you know, trust me, God isn't a little idol, you know, mm -hmm. right. or isn't some guy in a permanent lotus, you know, that's not God. Right. Right. But, you know, and the people that say, well, we're going to take this and we're going to take this and we're going to become our own gods, or mm -hmm. these be the gods, oh, Israel, that, you know, and somebody says, well, who made the clay? Who made the stone? You know, <laughs> yeah. right. you know, the joke. Yeah. The, the scientists are bragging about <laughs> who did it and God, voice from heaven says, get your own dirt. You know? yeah. <laughs> so, so the point yeah. is, is that what I'm praying, okay, uh, if I could say this, I would like the people of God to have the Spirit of God place the awe of God, awe meaning wow, back into their lives, okay? Because I think too many people go like this from God, they run from God all their life, mm -hmm. and when it's like this, if Jesus can hold, hold his palms out to him, I don't think we need to shake a fist towards heaven. And then it gets into the whole attitude of, of you know, the giants, and, the, and like Tom and, and I and Tim were just talking, you know, on a, a previous broadcast on mm -hmm. Skywatch, the idea that humanity is so unique that the fallen angels wanted to in insert themselves into our domain. Mm -hmm. And now you have it reversed. You have the humans wanting to insert themselves into the yes. devil's right. domain. Yep. Right. You know, it's kind of like trading places, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. or musical chairs, heaven or hell. You yeah, know? Mm -hmm. And it comes from the occult side and the scientific side. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And, and science, true science, I mean, you know, I'm not going to argue with God over the square of the hypotenuse is right. equal to the sum of the square of the other two sides. Hey, Tim, that's the only... That's the only like thing I remember out of geometry. I, fl <laughs> I flunked it, by the way. Okay. I did too, so yeah, it's and, okay. And, and <laughs> sines and cosines in trigonometry. Uh, I thought, you know, uh, I mean, like, are they talking about stop signs and yield <laughs> signs, you know? But the point is, I didn't do well in math. Yeah, know? same here. <laughs> but again, the book is very, very critical. And I, it's fascinating because, again, the story of Archimedes. Archimedes was tasked by the king mm -hmm. to build a crown. The king wanted to right. make sure that, you know, that all the gold was going in the crown. Yeah. So, you know, that's when he found the, you know, sitting in a bathtub. Yep, the displacement. This displacement, yep. specific gravity. Mm -hmm. And he ran naked in the streets saying, Eureka, <laughs> I promise you, I'll keep my clothes on. And this was a Eureka moment, but I had them off and I put on my towel. And it wasn't private. <laughs> but it was interesting because, again, you know, it, it, just real quickly, I want to, Psalm 56, 1 through 8, Be merciful unto me, O God, for man would swallow me up. He fighting daily oppresses me. You count my wanderings, put you my tears into thy bottle. Are not they in my book? You know? Wow. Mm. And so that's kind of the uh, five-minute introduction world. <laughs>
<laughs> well, if we had hours and hours and hours, I, I would want to continue on more with this. Discuss more of this, um, yes. But th this, th I, I think that this book is really going to mean a lot to, like you said, people who have, uh, especially the unforgiveness aspect, because, yeah. um, and I've been through this in, in my, you know, it's part of my testimony now, but there, yeah. you know, I, I went through abuse and a lot of different things growing up, and mm -hmm. I had a lot of unforgiveness about that. And for me, uh, it, it took the realization that, Jesus takes on all of that. So he understands it. It doesn't mean that, it does mean that he makes it, you know, it's, it, it's okay. And, and there's going to come a time where he wipes away all our tears. But at least when we're on this side of eternity, when we're, uh, when we're in time right now, he understands it. He's, he's living it with us. I mean, there's Amen. no more personal relationship than that. Yeah. And it, it took, for me, it took that realization to really let go a lot of that unforgiveness and stuff. And uh, so I, 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 my prayer is that this book can help others out there for the same thing. I'm praying that too. Yeah. In a way, you know, you can understand through our emotion, the heart of God at times, you know, mm -hmm. he, he created us in his likeness and his image. And so every emotion that we have, he has as well. And when we weep for someone or, you know, we're sad about something, how do you think he feels about the people who, you know, he wants them to come to him? Yeah. You know, we can understand that in a way. Well, I think as, as God continues to reveal himself from, mm -hmm. on his terms, you know, everybody wants to serve God on their terms. I'm <laughs> thinking that the way to do it is serve him on his terms. Yeah. yeah. And I really believe that. And I, I, may I just hold up the cover? Absolutely. Sure. You know, tears, an ocean of emotion. Uh, I think this is going to be really critical for a lot of people because from Genesis to Revelation, you're dealing with tears. Yeah. yeah. And, in the, and in the last you know, chapter of the Bible, the book of Revelation, it specifically says, and, and God wipes away our tears, yes. you know, yeah. and there'll be no more weeping, you know, and mm -hmm. so the thing is, is that um, I think for, and, and by the way, it's biblical, I mm -hmm. challenge people, you take it to the Lord in prayer, you read the scriptures, you know, mm -hmm. and again, one of the last things I want to say uh, is this, that the toughest thing for people to deal with is mourning, okay? Yes. Yeah. And, you know, I, you can quote the scripture, you know, weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Mm -hmm. But in the morning, M-O-R-N-I-N-G, yeah. you know, but M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G, it's a process. Mm -hmm. You can't hurry it up, you know, mm -hmm. you can't give someone a pat on the back. You can't make jokes. Mm -hmm. You can't take away, uh, you can't put salve on a person's broken heart. That's right. But the ministry of Jesus, Luke 4, 19, when he stood up and said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, you mm -hmm. know, to preach what the acceptable year of the Lord and to bind up the brokenhearted, to mm -hmm. set at liberty them that are held captive. Brokenheartedness is the perfect, okay, perfect vehicle for someone to see their need for the redemption of Jesus Christ. And I'm telling you, tears, I, I don't think of tears the same way anymore, you know? Yeah. I don't go chop up onions and go, <laughs> <laughs> you know? but I mean, trust me, there's plenty to cry about. Yeah. And one of the things I said, Josh, the tragedy of the church, the church, the professing claimants to uh, the, the tenants of historic Christianity, I call them claimants, you know, mm -hmm. and possessants. I don't know if that's a real word, but I use it. I don't care. If it's not a word, I create it. But possessants, okay, <laughs> of Christianity. Those, there's one thing to confess, there's another thing to uh, profess, it's another thing to possess, you know. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, it's, you know, people say, well, I know Jesus. And the answer is the same one Jesus said, but do I know you? you there know? you mm -hmm. go, yeah. Yeah, and so, you know, it, it's a communication. The fear of the Lord, the fear of the Lord is a spiritual function of the Holy Ghost. It's one of the sevenfold mm -hmm. aspects of the Holy Spirit. And so the fear, the spirit of the fear of the Lord. And that's what people have, are missing. They don't, we don't have that reverential awe and that, be, that I, I, you know, the word awful used mm -hmm. to mean a good thing. Now yeah. it means a bad thing. Full of yeah. awe. Full yeah. of awe, <laughs> you know. And we don't use words like resplendent, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and the words that used to have so much meaning, mm -hmm. like have faded away, mm -hmm. you know. And I, I'm just excited to be able to offer this. And it, it's available, it'll be available on Skywatch, you know, yes. Skywatch's store. And uh, I think it's one book going into the times that are ahead. Mm -hmm. There's enough prophecy out there to know it's not a good time, Sally time coming, okay? Right. right. But how to deal with it, and obviously as somebody who's in the prep movement, and I just, you know, is one of the guys that started it, mm -hmm. the thing is, is that now I see what God's doing. He's saying, you're going to move into now a new area. You're going to move into the area of preparing people, mm -hmm. you know, and so I'm excited. Yeah. And obviously, this would not have been on my, you know, 
uh, what do you call it, short list or right. bucket list, you know? <laughs> you know? So the point is, is that I love the way the Lord can open doors for us that we don't even know exist, you mm -hmm. know? Especially when you run into a wall and bang your head enough time, and, <laughs> and the guy says, move five feet left yep. or right, and you get out of there, you know? But anyway, so thank you so much for letting me well, come on. Thank you for being on, and, and we've certainly been through that too, and, uh, and, and thank you for the book. If people want to find out more about you, where can they go? stevequayle.com, Q-U-A-Y-L-E.com, and um, it's over on the right-hand side of my front page. By the way, when I'm not gone like I am now, I update that thing about 18 hours a day, okay? Yes. <laughs> because I'm trying to stay on top of it. And I guess I could justify my sleeplessness by quoting the scripture, <laughs> Watchmen, give no sleep to your eyes. But I'm going, Lord, could I be in the other category where basically it's uh, he giveth his beloved rest? You there know? you go, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but see, there comes a time when, you know, y y we only have so much time, okay? Mm -hmm. That's right. But again, I want to leave you with this. Start thinking about this, Josh, because all of our decisions are at one time. Jesus died for all men at all times at that point. Mm -hmm. But that point is like being a piece of writing on a, on a, on a basketball, okay? Mm -hmm. And I know nothing about sports, but we'll use a basketball. Mm -hmm. But every place on that basketball is the surface, and every place that a puncture goes in goes into the core of the right. basketball, mm -hmm. okay? Yep. So that's how I see eternity. I see this as all happening because you can say, well, I can think back a year or two. You go back 10 years, go back mm -hmm. 15 years, go back 20 years. But this is why time flies, and this is why people are, are experiencing before uh, uh, a dangerous event. Sometimes their life passes before them yep. in an instant. Yep. That's, that's what they're experiencing. They're experiencing that, and I'll use the word matrix, and I don't mean mm -hmm. it in the context of the movie, but that lattice work, that yeah. eternal lattice work, and then every connecting square, okay, mm -hmm. if the square is a given parameter of an event, uh, time, something, uh, excuse me, not time, but a parameter of an event, then where those squares intersect, uh, you know why I don't, I'm not an artist, but anyway, <laughs> intersecting squares, you know, I flunked those tests. The point being is that the, the point of contact, if you make the decision one way or another, that's how God honors free will. That's Isn't right. that neat? Yeah. Oh, man. It, so it, cool. it blows my mind. I, it blows my mind, too. It, it's fascinating. And uh, it kind of brings me to Ephesians 2, 5 through 6, which says that that we we have already been raised together to sit with Jesus in the heavenly. Mm -hmm. So think about that. We've already been raised. We're there now in eternity outside of time, yet we're here in time consciously. So it, it's amazing to think about that. That'll have to be a whole other program, but yeah. <laughs> just going along <laughs> with what you're saying about time. But uh, uh, absolutely fantastic program. Thank you so much for coming on the show and, and oh, talking about your book. And uh, this is fantastic. Thank you, guys. Awesome. <laughs> absolutely. All right. So for, uh, for my wife, Christina Peck, and for Steve Quayle, this has been Into the Multiverse. Thank you for watching. And as always, take care and God bless.